Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is gonna be a episode on the ENSO, the, the Enzo, and what's to come. There was an updated version on Thursday, but this is Sunday. Since I was pretty doggone sick uh, for the past three, two to three days, uh, it came by, it's, yeah, I'm over it completely now, but it came by very you know quickly and suddenly but now it's back to normal 100 percent. but it was just it was just you know, it was like a flu like illness it wasn't the flu it was like a flu like illness so that was a little bit weird but uh despite that it doesn't matter uh i'm back on the weather uh and if you would like to subscribe you could do so i'll be making much more videos i'm thinking of uploading my winter outlook soon enough i don't know when maybe within a week I, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe sooner, maybe later, um, I don't think much later, but, uh, I think within the next couple of days it should be out, so stay tuned for that, also, uh, there will be more videos about the fall and winter patterns, so definitely just stay on top of this channel, uh, you can do so by subscribing, thank you for that, so right now let's just jump into this, so, this is a blog off of climate.gov and you can see Trump and you can see that <clears throat> that this is a written by one person which usually I don't like to do uh, because I usually like where it's like an input of several people because it could be easily biased but um, basically let's just look at the data because the data is, they could analyze the data in their own way I don't care I just want to show you the d data. Uh, because the usual website that I look like look at the ENSO Outlook, the Enzo Outlook, ENSO, sorry, Enzo Outlook, um, it's not updated yet. But you can see that the El Nino models uh, forecast right now to stay in El Nino for the next uh, couple of months. Um, I should say couple of couple. Okay, yeah. So see, this is July 2019. So. It, you know, that's where it was and this is where it is kind of right now and it's gonna stay as a uh, as an El Nino but quickly dropping down into a neutral threshold and you could see that uh, anywhere from I would say 68% uh, to 98 anywhere you see that your brighter shading let me see if I could zoom in on this because I don't know if you could really see it but you can see that uh, there's two different shadings. That lighter shading is 95, uh, a 68% of that night uh, forecast and 95% of forecast. And that line is the average of all the forecasts. So you can see that most of uh, the forecasts, 95% of the forecasts, uh, are obviously in between a very weak El Nino or a very weak, weak La Nina. And then I would say 68 or even a little bit more are for a neutral to occur across the fall and possibly winter. Now, uh, you could see there's a possibility that this could, some of the models are occur showing that a La Nina could occur possibly. Uh, that's about, um, I would say, you know, maybe 10% of the models are showing right now that a La Nina could occur. Um, maybe a little bit more, 15, 20%. That is, you know, possible. But then also look up here. There's also 10 to 15% chance that an El Nino could occur with the most uh, concurrence on a neutral pattern, neutral Enzo taking hold. So, um, you know, an interesting, interesting thing is going on. We are seeing more of a neutral pattern take hold. You can see this is what's going on. Early July 2019 official probabilistic ENSO forecast. You could see that July, Ju June, July, August. That's where we are right now. It's 40-50 with the La Nina uh, neutral. It's in a pretty uh, neutral conditions right now in Ocean. I'll show you the anomalies in just a minute. Nigger. But it's still showing as a... Fuck you. As uh, They're still showing a... Uh, they're still showing it as an El Nino right now. But I don't think it's going to hold itself up for much longer due to the fact that... Um, that the it looks as if the... The El Nino is quickly fading away and different conditions are taking its place uh, not, other than a, uh, a El Nino, like in more of a not La Nina pattern it looks to be taking hold. You can see that in August, September, October it peaks around 60-70% chance, but again, by the time we reach that zone, this could be going up again, uh, the, these chances. So this is just a very far-fetched outlook. We could see a neutral pattern may re remain in... Uh, in dominance throughout the winter, which would be interesting, and we'll have to see. Um, but uh, you could see that uh, this they say that basically neutral is still the most likely outcome, and I agree with that. Probability of La Nina 
uh, remains fairly small, and I would say the uh, El Nino also remains fairly small, but it could increase uh, through the springtime. So I feel like this person that wrote it did a fairly good job of writing this. And now um, I want to put an own twist on mine thing and not, you know, just read off what they wrote because that would not be fair. So let's uh, basically write, uh, go over to tropicaltidbits.com and you could, I'll put a link to this blog, by the way, in the description box below uh, so you could use it. Or, and look at it so basically you can see this is tropical tidbits um uh, this is the, basically the sea surface temperature anomaly where it is above or below average and the zone that we're looking at is right here uh, this area and you can see it's there's some orange blotches which indicate of an El Nino, but there's more blue, which indicate of a La Nina but overall it's more of a neutral pattern right now um, it's neither of each I mean it's just warm and cool generally across it's a neutral, that's what I, almost a neutral, barely El Nino. It's not a La Nina pattern, though, but it may, I mean, or not, you know, it just said it remains a 15% chance, which, um, which I earlier estimated on 15 to 20, which I was right. So, uh, you can see that this is what the sea surface temperatures look like, and if we were to get a neutral uh, Enzo, ENSO, this is what it would look like. Typical winter patterns during an Enzo neutral neutral years and you can oh, <clears throat> and you could see that uh 14 cases through 1961 through 2000 the year 2000 uh, these are years obviously and you can see that uh during a i already explained this but i still want to explain it to those that are watching this video for the first time on my channel uh that the, the polar jet stream dives further south than uh during a la nina or an el nino and there's more sustained cold across the north and the northeast and there's obviously this wet warm jet stream this subtropical jet stream which usually is there it just depends on how far far how far north or how far south it is and usually that brings up big storms that could uh, track along this the coastline with this jet stream and then could produce quite a bit of snow once they reach that cold air when that rain transitions to snow during the winter time especially during the cold months like january february and march especially february and march um, if we were to look at, yeah, okay, um, if we were to look at the La Nina pattern, which again, there's a 15% chance, um, if then, if, you know, if the models show some of that, uh, some of that more resilient dipping into the La Nina pattern rather than going up, you can see the cold is there, but it stays generally, um, to the northwest, and it just, it does come down here, just not as frequently as during the neutral I was during a neutral and you can see that there's that wet warm is getting a little bit further to the north so there may be a little bit more uh, uh, instances of warmer weather across the northeast but again if that cold and the warmer and moist air meet up that could mean quite a bit of uh, storms yet again for the northeast and uh, cold for the north northwest wet and cold also could mean quite a bit of uh, nor uh, snow for the northwest if you look at the south during a La Nina it looks fairly dry and warm you can see the outline but also uh, wherever that jet stream lines up with the subtropical jet stream this polar jet stream with the variable pacific jet stream it could be also wet so this is not set in stone and if we were to look back at the neutral um, the south as, as well is fairly warm um, and they don't have it here but the northwest would also be fairly warm or not warm but a precip filled with this pacific jet stream just barging into those mountains the cascades now an El Nino pattern, a, um, it, you know the one that's uh, basically this one right here, El Nino threshold, which is again about 15%, maybe a little bit more. You can see that it's it's even flipped around. It's cooler across the south, not necessarily cold, uh, you know, not necessarily cold enough to produce snow, but definitely cool. And if there was um, already cold air in place, say from a uh, a fluke arctic shot that the La Nina usually doesn't bring but let's say it does and the cold cool La Nina conditions were there or El Nino conditions you, you know they could produce some snow across the southeast but it's wet all along the south and you notice how they say wet not really snowy because it does really snow across these areas and then uh, during an El Nino the low pressure is right here the polar jet stream sends way itself way up to the north air is very cold down here in Canada across James Bay, Hudson Bay, but not across the northwest and the U.S., northern U.S. Very warm and dry. These two jet streams never hit each other, and they just, there's not a pattern for big storms. 
And I apologize that happens every time we go, go over 10 minutes, the, uh, the, the video stops. But I, I just wanted to give you a quick update on this. Uh, right now, as of now, there's an interesting situation. We may be going into neutral and we're getting closer and closer to the, um, the L or to fall and the El Nino season, I guess, uh, when it really starts taking impact. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel and I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.